All right, Trip Swift here. So we use 3D Canvas for the 3D side of Bailiwiki, and the development for it has been absolutely rapid. So rapid, in fact, that we figured it'd be a good idea to do a monthly roundup of some of the important updates. There have already been some big changes this year from back in January that some of you might not be aware of though. So what we're going to do is we'll start today by going over January's big updates and then in the near future we'll do a video on February's and then March's and then after that we'll cover any big updates on a month by month basis. So the first thing I'll cover did actually appear in late December and a lot of you are probably already aware of it but it's a pretty important one so it bears repeating the community map browser. So this is uploading scenes onto this browser, download scenes from community members, all inside Foundry, very nice. Nice and simple, easy to use, and gives you a massive library of scenes at your fingertips. So roughly going in chronological order, the first thing I'll cover is tile merging. Uh, this has been a pretty big one for performance, meaning that even large complicated scenes can run effortlessly on older hardware. To give you an example, Say I'm making a dungeon and I put down some floor tiles and some wall tiles. You'll see here each of these tiles is an individual object that can be pulled out, put back in, etc. Rotated around. These tiles are identical, but each of them is currently an individual object. So that's, say, 15 things that the scene needs to keep track of and render. If I use the tile merging feature, though, in order to get your hands on that, go over to your compendiums here, come down to Macro and then in 3D Canvas macros, there's the Auto Merge All Tiles macro. So I've got that down here on the hotbar. So if I run that macro there, it'll merge all the tiles in the scene. And now, as you can see, all of these identical floor tiles are now just one big tile. And similarly with the walls here, they're also one tile. To use the technical term, they're instances of the original. So this results in scenes that are much easier to load higher frame rates, simpler scene organization. Overall, it's just much easier to use for anyone making maps or playing in them. An important note is that after you've merged tiles together, if you right click on a merge tile, you can then click on this button to unmerge them to return them back to normal, and then you can edit them as you like and carry on. The second thing I'll cover is the text option added to the Dynamesh list. So if anyone doesn't know, if you open up the configuration on a tile, and then use this dynamic mesh drop down. It'll give you a list of options, including box, sphere, cylinder, a whole bunch of different shapes, and then text at the bottom here. And then you type your text into the 3D model field to change what it says. Like so. So having 3D text in your scenes could be useful for a number of things. Uh, they can be used for, say, putting writing on a sign in the scene itself or even just putting notes on a map for other DMs or for yourself. Uh, that can be, you know, nice and easy to read without having to have entries in any compendiums or anything like that. The next update I'll be talking about was a fairly big one. That uh, is the Asset Browser, which is this button here on the uh, Tile Controls menu. If you click that, you get a window listing a whole bunch of assets. Type a search term into the top, and it'll sort through all the props you've got and show them along with thumbnails so you can identify them easily. Absolutely great for quickly populating scenes. We just drag them into the scene there. Oh, that was a bit large. Just do this one. There we go. Just drag them into the scene there. And what you can also do is do things like enable randomize scale and rotation, and then take pieces of clutter or say a tree and then click in the scene and what that'll do is it'll rest things that are slightly different size and facing in different directions to each other which gives a very lifelike kind of scene especially when you're doing anything natural you can also use control and select several and then when you click it'll randomly select one of the uh, items you've got selected on the list so absolutely fantastic for quickly populating forests and the like. This uh, asset browser probably deserves its own video, but we'll move on for now. Next is the quick 3D terrain feature. That is this button here in the tile controls, quick 3D terrain. This is best used on a new empty scene. So you can use these controls to generate terrain quickly, already set up with textures and ready to go. 
If I just click generate, there is some terrain. You just keep clicking on generate to switch between them. I quite like the island theme. And this uses the uh, gradient shader in order to texture it so that you get, for example, you know, dirt up high, grass in the middle, sand down below. And then also you can do things like add water to the scene, which will spawn another tile that's got the water shader on it so it does kind of ripple slowly along as it goes along. Or you could change the uh, theme of the place with just a button. Very powerful features. Um, I'd recommend checking out episode 4 of How to 3D with Foundry VTT because we use this to quickly create an exterior map. It's uh, an excellent feature with lots of potential uses. Another update from January was multi-threading being added. Uh, the short version of what that is is it's a big performance boost for pretty much everyone. The slightly less short, slightly more technical version is that 3D Canvas is now capable of utilizing more than one CPU at a time. And since devices with less than four cores are fairly rare these days, this has been a big bump in performance for pretty much everyone overall. Uh, kind of hard to visualize, but uh, that's been updated as well to increase the performance even from when it was initially uh, implemented. This next feature is a bit easier to show on camera. Uh, this map here is the Streets of Greywall by Jeff V, but um, it's the first person camera. If you select the token and then press the L key, you get the uh, first person view from that token. You can use the right click to click and drag and look around, and the arrow keys to move around in the scene. It's mostly intended to check for sight lines or just get really immersive camera angles rather than for actual play. Uh, you can zip in and out of it at any time just with the L key, so it's quite fun to check out these maps from the ground. Another feature that's great for getting really cool looking scenes but isn't necessarily meant for use while playing is depth of field. Um, this option is in the settings menu for 3D Canvas and it's per player so you can turn it on and off individually if you like. You just scroll down to depth of field here and set it to either low, medium or high. Let's put it on high just to see. And what depth of field does is it basically takes what's at the center of your screen and then blurs everything that's either further away from or closer than that point. Uh, it's very customizable, so you can change the effect around in various different ways. Uh, it's great for anyone who really likes to take cool photos of things that are happening in their games. It looks very nice in a kind of cinematography sort of way, um, though it might be irritating to play with. Obviously, it depends on yeah, how your preferences are. And the last big update at the end of January was actually that the 3D Canvas demo server became live. This is a public game that you can connect to that's running 3D Canvas with a variety of scenes. And it's great for seeing how your computer fares in 3D if you're concerned that like maybe your computer is older and you're not sure if it'll run. I'm pretty confident it will, but this would let you actually test that. Um, I'd heavily recommend using Chrome to connect to it, seeing as Something to do with how Firefox handles graphics means that it's a lot slower for some reason. The game resets back to default every two hours or so and goes down occasionally for maintenance, so if you get kicked out of it, you should just be able to reconnect shortly afterwards. But it's open access for anyone, you don't need 3D Canvas to connect to it. Just have a look around. I'll put the link to that, or a link to the link to that, in the description, and I recommend anyone give it a check out. Alright, that was a fair bit of stuff, and that was just January. You can probably see what I mean when I say that 3D Canvas's development has been rapid. Ripper's got quite the work ethic on him. Uh, we don't want these videos to drag on for too long though, so February's updates will be another day. Uh, I hope this video has been helpful to you though. It's really easy for really valuable features to slip through the cracks or just be forgotten. So hopefully these will bring some of them to light for you. I'll see you all in the next one.